Hello, 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 hello. It is Saturday afternoon instead of Sunday morning. Oh, my sister came and she just left this morning. We had a really good time. It was stressful though. That whole introvert and people thing. I uh, had one eye surgery. I don't know if you can see it, but this eye looks kind of vampire-y. Uh, but the floaters are gone in that eye, so it's, I'm real excited. Uh, no pain, no problems, everything's good. I go back to the doctor for a follow-up next week, and then two weeks after that, we'll do the other eye. But, I have a goodie to share. This is the whole reason I made this video. I waited till my sister left. Um, you know, I wanted chicken since we got here, and it just didn't happen, it just didn't happen, and it just didn't happen. Well, guess what happened this week? Let me turn my camera around. I want y'all to know that Tim the Beard or Gray the Beard, whichever one you know him by, Tim and Nana uh, built this for me, and he did a super spectacular job. I love this. So let me flip my camera around. Do it. The leaves are falling. Okay, that is my chicken coop and run. It is a. He made me a bench so that I could sit out here and drink coffee with my chickens and make videos. Isn't it sweet? Um, I'll walk around the outside. These are the grow bags that failed. I'm going to plant like peas and eggplant and squash and zucchini in them next year. So it will all grow up over because there's some on the other side if you can't see. But yeah, it's a metal building and there's still construction debris because his little four-year-old helper got sick in the middle of all of this. So, but yeah... I have six chickens, and this fine lady right here, who always meets me at the gate, the first morning when I came in and opened their coop, I was going to name them after the Andrews sisters and uh, Vera Lynn and Rosemary Clooney, and I hadn't, hadn't decided who the other one was going to be named after. But I'm walking through the, through the run, and I'm thinking to myself, my first chickens, I have my first chickens, and I opened the, uh, the gate, or opened their coop, and said, good morning, ladies. And I thought, oh, my first ladies. And that changed the whole naming thing. Yes, I know you don't name your food, but we're not going to eat these. They're just for chick for eggs. Excuse me, Martha. So my chickens are named out of after six first ladies. This lovely girl right here, she is the elder states person. She's about two. This is Martha Washington. And the other girls, of course, are in the dark coop, so I don't know if you'll be able to see them. But I'll get over here and see if I can get close enough. That lovely lady right there is Eliza Adams, the wife of John Quincy Adams. That one right there is Eleanor Washington. The two standing there playing kissy face with each other, the two buffs, are Dolly Madison and Abigail Adams. And the other dark one back over there is Edith Roosevelt. So yes, my first ladies are named for first ladies. Only one that's laying is Martha. The other, the other four are young, or five are young. They were just hatched out in, I want to say July. But look at the air vents around the top. Isn't that cool? Tim said he figured we needed all the blessings we could get, so all of their are holes sold in the shape of a cross. But he used, you know, I had that high tunnel that collapsed in the wind. He used the frame from it to make their run. Reinforced it with PVC and, of course, cattle panels and chicken wire. But yes, isn't that exciting? It's a good size run, too. It's actually bigger, I think, than six chickens need, but, you know, chicken math. But, yeah, he, uh, to keep predators out, there's all this chicken wire up here, so he put, like, an awning part over the front of it. So when I plant stuff, it will grow up here, and I will have a place to sit in the shade and drink coffee and talk to y'all. So yes, I have chickens. I'm very excited. Uh, the dogs don't seem to be... Uh, Weezer doesn't mind chickens. She, well, she's been watching 
Tim and Nana's for quite a while, and she doesn't bark at them or anything. She just watches over them until the boys start chasing them, trying to round them up, and then she fusses at the boys for chasing chickens. Korag has seen them and is like, mm, yep, there they are. There's something over there. But uh, I've already gotten two eggs. Martha has been very generous. But yes, I have chickens now. When we moved here, when we were looking for the house, my absolute requ requirement was I had to have chickens. I wanted chickens. Dwayne's absolute requirement was he wanted a room for his model trains. I have my chickens. I'm a happy camper. He doesn't have his model trains yet. I mean, he's got the trains, but not the setup. Uh, but yeah, my sister got to see the chickens. She's all excited. And I was going to, because the shed is kind of the putty white, I was thinking about calling it the White House because they're first ladies. Except I think that that would be an insult to those first ladies. When my dad, when people would make my father angry, not angry, frustrated, irritated, you know. Daddy would kind of put his hands on his hips and say, well, I run this chicken shit outfit. So we're going to do it my way. So guess what I'm going to name it? <laughs> this is the chicken shit outfit. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Had a really nice visit with my sister. We went through like five generations of photographs. Um, you know, those of us of a certain age, and my sister is older than I am by six years, uh, we have all the family heirlooms, all the family treasures, all of that kind of stuff, and our kids don't want them. Between the two of us and our older sister that we lost, uh, about eight years ago, we had all of mother's family photos, all of daddy's family photos, and I seem to be the, uh, my, my oldest sister and I seem to be the only ones who recognize people in those photos, although most of them were dead before I was born. Uh, so my sister and I went through, and we purged all of the out-of-focus photos, all the photos of people that... It's like, I know that, that those are Daddy's Hughes cousins, but I don't know who they are and can't identify anybody or anything like that. We got rid of all of those photos. <coughs> Saved lots of photos. And I had photos that my sister had never seen, and my sister had photos I'd never seen. Dwayne scanned them for us, and we're going to put them in books like you do on Shutterfly or that sort of thing. And give them to our kids and we're going to get rid of the photos. Nobody wants them. Our kids don't recognize half the people that we recognized. I'm on Ancestry, so I have a lot of stuff there. I will take a lot of those photos and add them to my Ancestry. So the other family members that I don't know, you know, your, your DNA says this, can match people up. And I have photographs of everybody's headstones and all of that on daddy's family and some of mothers. Have my daddy's honorable discharge papers. In 1945, they didn't hand out a, a they didn't give him like a DD-214. They gave him an, a different form. I have all of that. Um, you know, my parents' baby pictures. When... My sisters were born in Venezuela. Mother and Daddy spent seven years down there in the 50s. That's where both my sisters were born. And you know how it is when you have kids. The first kid, you take a photograph of every stinking thing they do. Um, so there's nine million tons of pictures of Lee, and she was a beautiful baby, absolutely gorgeous. Had these beautiful rosy cheeks and these real full lips and always had a smile. Susan was born 19 months later. There's a ton of pictures of Susan, too, but not near as many as there were of Lee. I was born six years later. There are practically no pictures of me as a little one. Because you know how it goes when you got kids. It just, life changes and things go on. Uh, and then they're, they're, you know, the ones, th there's a period where they completely stop. And there become a lot of more pictures of mother and daddy and that kind of stuff. It's because I had the camera. So... We went through all of that, and Dwayne has 
like 99% of just the ones that my sister brought scanned. Then I have to go through the four giant plastic storage totes of just pictures that I need to go through and add to that. And then we're going to turn them into books for our kids. But yeah. Those of you with who have those family photos and the family photo albums and everything else, I hope you have kids that want them. My sister has one child and then I have two. And none of them really want the photographs. So we're going to put them in a book. And, you know, make a book for each kid. And I think for my father's family, I have a co had a cousin who lived in Salt Lake and she has two children. She has now passed. Um, but her mother was my dad's sister. So my dad's family photos, I think I'm going to send the book of them to, to her girl, her son and daughter too. But yeah, and my sister and I were talking, our twice great-grandfather and great-grandfather were master cabinet makers. They did the intricate, you know, the filigree work and stuff on Victorian church pews and that sort of stuff. That's the kind of woodwork they did. And we have a roll-top desk that, that uh, our great-great-grandfather made. We have an inlaid chess table that our grandfather made. I have a sewing or nursing rocker that one of them made. I have the bedroom set that my father was born in. And none of our kids want any of that stuff. My sister has my mother's secretary desk. She's got some other stuff. and You know, I have my mother's dining room furniture. 1950s Ethan Allen colonial style furniture early American style rather I didn't really care for it but it was mother's dining room suit so I have it I have the dishes that my father's great grandfather when they immigrated from England the china that they brought with them all of that stuff and none of our kids want any of it so those of you who are young whose parents have that kind of stuff I don't care if it goes with your decor. Um, my sister's daughter is very minimalist and modern and that kind of stuff. So all these, you know, Victorian antiques, she's not interested in. You know, suck it up. Take one for the team. Uh, don't just shrug your shoulders and say, well, Mom, I don't like that, or it doesn't go with my house, or it doesn't do this or that. In your 30s and 40s now, you don't like it. It's not your style. When you get to be my age, that's your family history. Oh, I can't believe it. Can you tell I've been with my sister for a whole week doing this? Um, you know, looking back at the photos and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, you may not like it now. You may not want it now. You may not have room for it now. And that's fine. I get it. But you take that stuff. That's your history. In tangible form. I laugh and say that anytime I pick up a needle, whether it's a knitting needle or a tatting shuttle or I weave, although I don't think anybody in my family but wove, or spin yarn or sew or quilt or do any of this stuff. I come from a long line of very gifted and talented needlewomen. And that's my connection to them. My grandmother, who was senile before I was born, uh, was born in the late 1880s in Noonan, Georgia, and went to a ladies finishing school. A finishing school for young ladies, I guess is technically what it was. And, she, you know, she did pedipoint embroidery, which if you don't know what that is, needlepoint rather, you should look. That stuff is amazing and requires a lot of practice and skill and that kind of stuff. She did all the fancy needlework. She, you know, painted china. She uh, 
did watercolors. She played the violin. She, you know, all of those finishing school things that women in the 19th century in the South did. She did those things. She taught them to her daughters. When my mother and my aunt wanted to teach me, I wasn't interested. Mother taught me to crochet. I don't remember a time when I couldn't crochet. And I don't do it very well. But somebody taught my sister Lee, who taught me to knit. And knitting is my first love. Uh, I learned to tat. I'm, I'm a self-taught needlewoman on a lot of stuff. Because I knew my family did it. And I wanted to learn. So, you know, my, like I said, my dad's grandfather and great-grandfather were both woodworking artists the work that they did that it was just amazing and my son has decided he wants to learn that stuff well he has his three times great grandfather's hand woodworking tools from the 1900s that they he brought with him from england um sorry that snotty nose between allergies and the wind and crying i'm a mess um but yeah, he has those woodworking tools, and he's learning. So, if you don't want it, your kids may. You may have a kid who <gasps> feels drawn to their ancestors who want these things. So you find space, you make room, you you don't look at it as a piece of furniture that you may think is ugly as sin, that doesn't match your bedroom suit or, well, the color's wrong for my living room or whatever. Don't look at it that way. Look at it as where you come from and you know what for those of you who are young at times in your life times may get hard money may get tight and you may need to sell that stuff to pay your bills to put food on your table so you know it's an investment it really, really is. It's an investment, not only in your history, but in your future. But anyway, I wanted to show you all the chickens. I'm so proud. Dwayne and I were laughing about calling their coop the chicken shit outfit is more respectful than calling it the White House. That's pretty sad, isn't it? I have plans for this week. Whether or not all of them come through, we will see. I'm going to start trying to make more videos. Uh, the ones I'm planning to do this week, I'm going to can some frozen vegetables. And I may throw about three bags of uh, mixed you know, peas and carrots and the stuff you throw in soups and that kind of thing. I'm going to uh, about three bags of those to about six pounds of that. So I'm going to probably do one bag of it on a dehydrator so you can see how to do that. And then I'm going to can the rest of it so you can see how to do that. Um, while my sister was here, she was asking me about prepping. I about fainted. So I taught her how to mylar. And I taught her how to vacuum seal in jars. Um, she's just taking baby steps, so I don't want to overwhelm her. So part of the reason I'm going to start making more videos on how to do stuff like that is so that she has the reference on how to do it and y'all too if y'all you know I mean there's other people out there that have taught you how to do that I'm probably going to do a vacuum sealing in jars the dry canning in jars with the vacuum sealer thing not the oven one but the with like the food saver um I'm probably going to do a mylaring video and I know there's a million of them out there uh but I'm doing these so that my sister has a, a reference um and I may do some of the mixed stuff that I do, like the cream of any. Well, I've got the video for cream of anything, but I may make the hot chocolate mix, and I may make uh, 
the either Russian tea or solstice tea, whichever one you call it, the one that's got tang and that kind of stuff in there. Um, I'm going to start trying to make videos like that for y'all and for my sister. Uh, she was sent here. She lives in a 55 and up community. And it's one of those planned master communities with a HOA that's nothing but Karens and Kens. And it's horrible. I mean, horrible. Um, so they can't garden. They can't do all this other stuff. They can't have chickens. They can't do this, that, and the other thing. Um, so they're all trying to figure out how they can prep without doing that sort of thing. So I'm going to start doing a lot of grocery store prep type stuff, repackaging, recanning, that sort of thing, so that they'll have the information. But yeah, they sent her with a whole list of questions. And I was like, oh my gosh, she's like really getting serious about this. So I'm excited. But yeah, that's what's going on. I will try to make a waiting for church video tomorrow. Um, I'm going to try to start upping my game on videos. I'm not making any promises. It may take me a while to get in the groove to get that stuff going. But, uh, yeah. Y'all be safe. Y'all have a good time. I don't know where you are, but the weather is gorgeous here. It's in the 70s and there's just enough breeze so that you don't get hot. My sister was loving it because she's from a suburb of Houston. So she's like, oh my gosh, there's no humidity here. I love this. She spent most, we spent most of our time sitting out here on my front porch. Dude, my chickens are none of your business. That guy's a nosy Nelly. But, um, yeah, that's, that's what's going on. That's what's happened this week. Things are, the dust is settling and for the two of us, our house is quiet. It's the two of us and the two dogs. It's, it's really quiet and boring. My sister and her dog, my sister's not a quiet person, which I'm not either really. I chatter, but it's because I don't see her very often. So it's like we talk nonstop trying to get all caught up on everything. But yeah, it's nice to just be the two of us and be quiet. So I will try to make my, my before church video tomorrow. Um, I'm going to, I have those vegetables defrosting on my kitchen counter now, thawing so I can can them tomorrow or yeah, tomorrow afternoon, I think I'm going to make that video. So I'm trying to get back to what I do and start making prepping videos again. And of course, chicken videos because I have ladies now. So, I love you guys. Y'all be safe. Y'all enjoy your weekend. Don't work too hard. And be here next time. I love you.